Hi guys, what is up? In this video, we'll be building a Slack bot using Golang. And as you can see on my screen, there are three different ways or levels at which you can integrate with the Slack API. The first level is the, the direct API integration, wherein you go to the Slack uh, API documentation and then you try to create Golang functions that actually talk to the uh, APIs directly. So that is the first approach. We won't be doing this. Then the second approach, which is, uh, so this is the most uh, low level in the sense, this is the lowest level of approach that you can follow. The one level above that is that somebody uh, right, the community, the Golang community has already written a library on top of the Slack APIs so that you don't have to work with the Slack APIs directly, but you can work with uh, a library, an SDK uh, for Golang. And uh, here, what the benefit that it, that it gives you is that you get to work with functions. So somebody has already written these functions that actually translate and talk to the APIs. But all you have to do is you have to uh, use your data points and then call these functions and the functions then take care of everything else, right? So this is usually the uh, approach that's followed by most of the people to integrate with Slack. Now, uh, in our case specifically, we're building Slack bots, right? Uh, so this does not really solve everything for us. What we have to do is we have to actually work with a lot of socket programming because uh, the bot should be able to read messages and also able to write messages. So we have to rely on something uh, uh, one step, uh, you know, higher than this once uh, one level above this, which is a socket package that somebody has written for Golang for the Slack library. So, so basically Slack gave us these uh, APIs, then the Golang community wrote uh, a library on top of these APIs, then somebody wrote a socket package, uh, you know, that helps you create Slack bots specifically on top of this uh, Golang library, right? So this then talks to the wrapper library, then uh, gives you, you know, in turn gives you access to functions, then you call the APIs. So this is what we're going to do. So, uh, so that we won't have to write a lot of code, right? So a lot of our work will be, uh, you know, taken care of by these two things. A lot of the heavy lifting would have already been done. Now, if you want to uh, you know just get slack messages or just get the list of the users and if you want to do those kind of uh, uh, you know uh, api integration which does not require socket and this is obviously the right way to go and this i can show you in another video right but we want uh, to create a slack bot something that can actually read messages and write messages in real time right so we want to use socket programming and so we'll have to uh, rely on this otherwise we'll have to do a lot of uh, coding to actually create this library on top of this right the socket library uh, if you want i can show you that as well but for the for the uh, you know course of this video at least what we're doing is we're uh, going to only be focusing on uh, you know working uh, creating a program that actually talks to this library so we're going to use a library called a slacker s-l-a-c-k-e-r i think i have it open out here so this is the slacker library that uh, somebody called shomali has already built so he i think he's a genius right so he's already written the complete uh, socket programming uh, part for you and all you have to do is you have to uh, you know get his uh, package and then uh, you know start start con uh, creating your own uh, slack bot so uh, enough, uh, I, th I think I've talked enough about uh, what we're going to do. And now what we'll do is we'll talk about the process that we'll follow, right? So a lot of this process, uh, about 50 to 60% of it is uh, on the Slack, uh, you know, uh, Slack dashboard and about 40, 30 to 40 or 50% almost is on uh, the, the writing the actual Golang code. So the, the writing the actual Golang code is not going to be very complex, right? Uh, but the confusing part that sometimes uh, people find very confusing is how do you actually create the bot in the, uh, in the, in the Slack console or the dashboard and then how do you get those uh, API keys and those tokens, right? because there, there's just so many settings to do that. So we'll cover all of those. So I, I'll take you through the uh, process here in this video. And then from the next video onwards, we'll actually start, I'll start taking you through the uh, the Slack dashboard and how to actually do this, right? So uh, what we'll do is we'll first create a Slack account. So if you don't have this, then I uh, highly encourage you to first create a Slack account before you you know start watching the next video of this series. So create a Slack account, create a workspace. You have to create a workspace in Slack, all right? Uh, then we'll go to uh, the api.slack.com uh, page, right? So which is this page, api.slack.com. This is the page that you need to be on, right? Uh, when you start the next video, I mean, uh, of the series. And then uh, from from here onwards, I'll take you uh, forward as in I'll, I'll, you know, from this place onwards, like create an app from here, I'll be able to guide you, but you have to come till here. You have to create a Slack account. You have to create a workspace and you have to come to api.slack.com, all right? And from this video onwards is where we'll start in the next video, this part onwards, okay? We'll create a new app. So it'll ask us, do you want it to start from scratch or from template? So this can be very useful when you're creating uh, subsequent bots. If you cre want to create more bots, then you can use templates, manifest.json files, and you can, uh, you know, 
uh, a lot of those permissions and accesses will, will be taken care of you don't have to actually uh, repeat all of that process again so uh, so this step uh, you know sometimes people uh, you know forget to check when creating a bot for the second time so I'll, I'll show you this then what we'll do but in this video is we'll create uh, the bot from scratch and we'll have to activate something called as the socket mode so we'll find socket mode in the menu in the left menu and then we'll enable socket mode I'll show you all of this so you don't have to worry after this after you come to this page right create an app I will show you all of these steps in the next video so you don't have to worry about it just create uh, your slack account and come to this uh, api.slack.com all right and then so in the, we'll enable the socket mode and then we'll copy our uh, token so socket mode gives us something called as the app token right so that we'll have to copy and then we'll have to find the event subscription option then we'll have to en enable all the events and we'll have to add permissions of the events that we want so these are the events that we'll uh, need access to we'll need uh, the our bot to have permissions to all of these you'll be able to read the chat and write messages all of those things right and we'll save the changes and also then we'll have to go to the oauth and permissions page where we'll install our bot that we've just created to our workspace and we'll copy the bot token from uh, from this page oauth and permissions page and then we'll so bot token is different from app token so a lot of people who try to create a slack bot they get confused between the two and then there are many more apis key which we won't be needing but uh, but slack gives you so many different types of api keys so the secret key and your user id and all those things so uh, we don't we don't have any work for those we just need these two things right the app token and the uh, the bot token so i'll show you how to get all both of these together this uh, you know generally people find this uh, to be the most confusing part anyways so we'll install it to our workplace so one thing you have to remember is that whenever you have installed a bot to your workspace right any changes you make in the settings or in the permissions you have to always reinstall it to your workspace this is one thing that again people i mean if you if you go to stack overflow and you find that the number of issues that people have barely uh, there is any issue regarding uh, the coding uh, the problems but most of the issues are, are uh, you know uh, can be solved by reinstalling it to your workspace in the sense people forget to reinstall it to their workspace right and then you uh, so after you install it to your workspace you start building your bot in the sense you start writing the code the golang code that you build your bot and then you uh, and then you start your bot obviously on your local server so we'll be we won't be installing it on a remote server we'll be installing it on a running it on a local server and our local server will talk to slack so let me show you actually using a diagram so this is our um, local host and we'll start, uh, you know, just uh, just as we start any other program. So we'll do uh, run, you know, main dot go or something like that, and that will su start our server. And our server will, in touch, uh, in, like uh, you know, in turn, uh, talk to uh, the Slack um, API, but using Socket, right? So we'll be using Socket to talk to the Slack API to our Slack workspace, right? And then. Uh, to, to be able to talk to your bot, you'll have to mention it on a channel like let's say a general challenge or some challenge or some, uh, somewhere like that. So you'll mention it on your channel and then uh, you'll uh, pass it some command. So we would have written that code on how to handle a particular command, right? And we would have written the replies also of those commands. And then uh, you'll be able to interact with your bot. All right. So these are the different steps. And I think, uh, yeah, so in, uh, I think it'll take two videos for me to actually cover all, all of this. Uh, then uh, the upcoming two videos. In one video, I'll take you through all the Slack uh, dashboard uh, things that you need to do right the slack interface things and then the next would be uh, actually creating the code and then interacting with our bot right building the code and interacting with the bot so two more videos will come up in this series so stay tuned if you're uh, you know really interested in building a slack bot and I, I recommend that you subscribe to this channel uh, because uh, we won't be just building a slack bot L like i said you know i'll show you how to actually uh, uh, you know integrate with the other apis that slack has right and not just the bot apis like the socket apis but the other apis that, that slack has i'll take you through all of these also and if you want i can also show you how to write the socket uh, package uh, you know on top of uh, the golang wrapper library right uh, as, as in i can break down the code for you and how to do this so uh, so these are the things that are coming up and thanks a lot for watching and uh, and see you in the next episode.